Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this tutorial I'm going to share with you how to design this poster using Cinema 4D Lite and After Effects. So let's go. First thing, let's open Cinema 4D Lite via After Effects. Then save and a new document and let's jump into Cinema 4D. Now let's set up our Cinema 4D document. Let's use a resolution of 1700 by 2400 and press OK. Perfect. Now let's start modeling some 3D letters. For that, let's select the text plan tool and write the first letter of our word. In my case is B for bit. Next, let's change our viewport to 4 views and let's use the top view for the next step. Let's click on the spline tool and choose a rectangle shape. And using the top view, scale and align the square shape to the letter. Then, when you are finished, press the letter C on your keyboard to convert the shape to editable. With our new shape selected, click on the point tool and select the vertex opposed to the letter. And using the backspace key, delete it. After that, let's go to the attributes and unselect the closed spline checkbox. Now, go to the left toolbar and select the spline arc tool. Still using the point tool, right click over the middle vertex of your spline and select chamfer and adjust the radius to your taste. Now it's when the real magic starts. Go to the right side toolbar and select the sweep transformer. Then drag and drop the text and rectangle shapes under the sweep object. And be sure to have the text spline above the rectangle, otherwise it will look a bit wrong. Before we fix the orientation of the letter, let's create a camera and on the object properties let's change the projection to isometric. So we can start working on our layout composition. Using the pan and zoom tools, let's position our first letter and fix it so it looks right. Click on our sweep tool and unselect all the checkboxes. Then go to the rectangle spline and on the rotation P change the value to 180 and this should solve it. Now still with our spline selected, let's change to the model mode and use the scale tool to increase the size of our spline so the extrude looks more interesting. And let's name our object to keep things organized in our project. Cool, now let's make a few copies of our 3D letter. With our object selected, let's hold the Ctrl or Command key and drag the object down. And let's make as many copies as we need. In my case I need 3. Let's name the object and move them down and update the text spline. After that, let's rearrange them to make a more interesting composition. Then let's select all the letters and press Alt or Command G to group them. Now it's time to add some material and colors. To start, let's open our material window and let's press the plus icon to create a new material. Cool, now let's double click on it and let's start by changing its color channel. On the color channel, let's leave the H and S at 0% and the V at 90%. Next, let's jump into the reflectance channel. Let's make it type specular, Fong legacy. Now let's close the window and let's apply these materials to the letters. Now it's time to add some lights to our scene. So let's go to the right side toolbar and select the little light icon. So before we start playing with our lights position, we are going to set up an interactive render region. Let's click on this icon close to our render settings and hold it and select interactive to render region. What this does is it will generate a very lower quality render that will be very useful for us when you are lighting our scene. Great, now let's have some fun with our light settings and position. As this will be our primary light, it needs to be the one casting the shadows. So let's select our light and go to shadow and choose which type of shadow we want to use in this design. I will select shadow maps soft and use a shadow map of 1000 by 1000 pixels. And this is it for now. Let's start positioning our light using the four views and try to find a suitable position where the light and shadow make our design look better. I like leaving my leading light on the top left side of my scene to create some cool projection shadows in my object. When you are happy with the result, let's create a new light and this will be our fill light. So we will reduce the intensity to 50%. This way it will only light up the darker spots nicely without overexposing our design. And using the four views, place a new light somewhere it lights up the darker spots, generally on the right side of the object. Cool, now let's go back to our main view and increase the quality of our interactive render region so you can see how our design is looking. 
Perfect, now we can configure our render. So let's click on our render settings. And the only thing we want to do here is to add the ambient occlusion effect. This creates a contact shadow between the elements, giving our design a more realistic look and an extra production value. Now let's save it and jump back into After Effects for final touches and export. The first thing we want to do here is to drag our Cinema 4D file into the After Effects composition window, so it creates a new composition using our file. Now let's go to our Effects tab and on the render settings, change the render to current. This will render our image full quality. Next, let's create a background. In our timeline, let's right click and go to New Solid and let's name it our solid as background and change the color to a lovely dark grey, which matches with our design direction. Press OK and move the solid layer under the Cinema 4D layer. Let's right click again, but this time we will create an adjustment layer and let's leave this layer above all the others. With our adjustment layer selected, let's go to the top menu and go to Effects, Color Correction and add some curves. Then let's do the same again, go to Effects, Noise and Grain and add grain. Cool, now let's use the curves to add contrast to our design and use the grain to add some nice texture. On the grain effect, let's change the viewing mode to final output and change the size to 0.5 to make a more delicate grain and change the color to monochromatic and that's it. To export a file, we can go to Composition, Save Frame as File and choose where we want to save it and the format. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I love using Cinema 4D for some design work and it's always good to be comfortable with 3D tools. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye bye.